Good evening, everybody. It's good to be back with you tonight here on Wednesday night at Kingsway Church. Uh, I'm honored tonight to have uh, Pastor Wells with me, and we're going to jump into some things tonight that's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, we are at the Sanctuary of Kingsway Church here in Ashland, Kentucky, and if, let me just say, if you've never uh, came out and been a part of our services, we'd like to invite you to come out and be a part of those. We we uh, meet every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. We have just a fabulous church, lots of wonderful Amen. people. Amen. Awesome worship, uh -huh. great pastors, great children's church and youth yeah. programs and, and nursery programs. We, we just, we would love to see you come out and be a part of this. We just know that if you came out and experienced uh, a service with us that you would just feel right at home and we'll make you feel right at home yeah. and uh, we believe that you'll hear about the, the word of the Lord and be an encouragement to you and speaking of encouragement that's really what Wednesday nights now uh, doing on uh, Facebook is really all about is to, to yes. spend a few minutes on a Wednesday mm -hmm. evening while folks are uh, in their homes or uh, out around their you know their homes doing yeah. whatever wherever they're at to give them just a few minutes of encouragement Pastor Wells. Amen Pastor and it's an honor to be here with you today. And we're going to talk about everybody needs Jesus. Amen. Everybody <laughs> needs Jesus. Amen. I Lord. think sometimes in today's society, we've, we've put, and maybe it's always been like this. I can't speak because I wasn't alive, you know, in previous right. generations. Maybe it's the same way. But I think that people think that somehow or another, if we just become decent people, uh -huh. We're, we're hard workers, we, we live our life with some measure of integrity, and we try our best to be a, a good person, that sometimes that's enough, uh -huh. and that we really don't need Jesus if we are that kind of person. And then, of course, on the other hand, there are people that, that are more obvious that they struggle, uh -huh. they, they've got problems, whether it be somebody's you know been in a, a, a terrible marriage, oh, or, yeah. or they, they're alcoholics, or they're drug addicts, or you know, things that are just right. obvious that people right. need help. I think sometimes we think, well, they need Jesus. Yeah. But I really don't need Jesus. And I think that we <laughs> need to clarify some mm -hmm. things about that and, and help people to see that everybody needs well, Jesus. Well, the Bible says all have sinned and all come have. short of the glory of God. So we've all sinned. Yeah. And even as Christians, we mess up. But yeah. we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the thing is it doesn't matter how good you are. We, we tend to think that it's based upon sometimes our actions. And right. maybe even as a whole, some people are, are largely, you know, major, by the majority, really good people. Yes. But, but the Bible does tell us that even if we've just erred in one, uh -huh. one thing, right. that that alone separates us from having an ability to be able to be uh, in, a, in a relationship with God. Yes, sir. So let, let's jump into this. Let me okay. read the scripture. Get, we'll get started here. Right. I thought about this as we were talking about getting ready to, 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 to share this, this thought this right. evening. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, And, and he said unto them, talking about Jesus, getting right. ready to speak, he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Now, I know the King James uses yeah. creature. Uh -huh. But in other translations, it says every creation. Amen. And so, yeah. and then he says, so preach the gospel to, essentially to everyone. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not will be damned. Amen. So essentially, he's telling us that everybody needs to hear about the gospel. Yes. And if everybody needs to hear about the gospel, Pastor Wells, then why would we, we think that sometimes that everybody don't need Jesus? I don't know. I don't understand it, Pastor. Yeah. And that's the first scripture that I ever seen when I walked into a Pentecostal meeting. Mm -hmm. I walked under the tent, and there it was up there <laughs> over the tent. Yeah. And it's a powerful scripture. It, it really is because yeah. it truly is. It, su mm -hmm. it summarizes what the Great Commission is. It yes. tells us that it's, it's a responsibility. When people get yeah. saved... And, and I know there's different calls. You, you were called into the pastoral ministry for 40 plus years, right? Yes, sir. Well, not everybody's called to pastor people for 40 years or some not, not called to pastor at all. Right. But the Bible does tell us that we're all, meaning every person. Yes, sir. We're all called uh -huh. to the ministry of reconciliation, yes. 
which means that we all have a responsibility once we come to the knowledge of, of Jesus to pass that information along. Yes, sir. And it, again, it doesn't mean that you'd necessarily stand up and preach a message. Right. It, but it does mean, you know, share with people what your life is like in living with Jesus and for Jesus. Right. And we don't have to go overseas to be missionaries. No, sir. Once we walk out of these doors after hearing you teach a wonderful message, we are entering our mission field. Right. And we're all on a mission, and every one of us needs to share what the Lord has done for us right. and let the others see how good God is. Yeah, for sure. Oh, glory. That'll and preach. I, it will <laughs> preach, and it does preach, and we do preach <laughs> that, don't we? Amen. And, and you know, I was thinking yeah. about also when we say that we all need Jesus, I think that sometimes people, you know, I've been, we've been talking about uh, don't you know, you know, in Romans 2, 4, it's one of my favorite scriptures because uh -huh. he says, uh, in, not in the King James, but in, in essentially what he's saying, he's, he's asking a question. The Apostle Paul talking to the Roman church, he says, don't you know that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance? Amen. So he's trying to tell them, look, in order for you to come to a place of repentance, yes. you need to know that God is good. And when you know that God's good, it draws you in. It's the attractiveness of his goodness Amen. that draws people to want to have the relationship with him. And I think that sometimes we just haven't done a good job on, on getting that message out. And I don't mean any one individual. I'm talking right. about the ch collective yes. church as yes, a whole. Sir. Yes, sir. We haven't done the best of jobs in that in to, to portray God in the proper light and and then really when i say god i'm really more referencing jesus yes because jesus is our savior uh -huh. he's the place Amen. that we have to look to Amen. and he's the one that we have to look to with an expectation for our salvation amen no other name there's no other name under under heaven that whereby men must be saved and, and i mean it's it, he's the only way yes and that's the other thing is yeah. folks sometimes People think that there's, uh, let me just be a good person. Yeah. And I, and I like what you said just a minute ago. Won't you, you tell them what you just tell me about how, if, I, if, if there was no heaven or hell. I would tell people if there's no heaven and there's no hell, living the Christian life is the best life you can live because you will be blessed by living yeah. for God. Amen. I, I totally yeah. agree with that. Even if heaven wasn't at stake. Right. Even if hell wasn't at stake. Right. There's just something about Christianity living yeah. that, that at the end of the day, you go to bed at night and yeah. you can feel good. Yes, you, can, you can feel like you, you know, that you have made some, some progress, you've uh -huh. achieved something, and you just feel good about life. Amen. And, and I know what the other side looked like. Yes, there was sir. disruption yeah. and yeah. there was all kinds of problems and, and I never was at peace. Right. And, and, and now I can go to bed at night. I feel good. I'm at peace. I know that at the end of the day, whatever it is, I know that God's going to help me through it because I have that kind of relationship with him. When, uh, when I was in sin, in the daytime, I was not afraid. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but when I went to bed at night, I prayed every night. I mean, yeah. Lord, let me wake up in the morning. <laughs> Give me a chance. Amen. Give yeah. me another day. <laughs> and, and so thinking about this, I think sometimes people think, all right, let me, let me be a decent person, and maybe it'll be enough, and uh, I'll try to do this the best I can, and, and that'll work. Uh -huh. Well, I believe what, what we find out is there's a lot more to a relationship with Jesus too yes, amen. Than, than just salvation. Although, mm. obviously, folks, if you never get anything other than that, that's the, the thing. You've <laughs> got to get that, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. It is the, 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 the thing that, as a minister, our desires right. uh, are to, for everybody to come yeah. to the knowledge of Jesus' saving grace so that they can be born again because that's what we want for everybody. But it's bigger than that too, Pastor Wells. Yeah. Um, there's so many wonderful things about why I need Jesus. Amen. I'm going, when I go through tough times, and I do, right. I think sometimes people think just because you're a minister, you don't go through tough times. Right. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. In fact, sometimes it might be you go through more, <laughs> more <laughs> yeah. adversity. I agree with that. And so when I'm going through stuff, yes, I have the knowledge that I'm, I'm saved, and at the end of my life, I have the 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 knowledge of knowing that yes. I get to go to heaven and be with, with God, my creator. But I also get to count on Jesus during tough times in my life. And we all have those tough times. 
and I, I have the resource to look to him to help me through those tough times, don't I? Yes, he's a present help in the time of need. I mean, uh, I really had a difficult time. You know, my dad died when I was 10, and we didn't really have a, an adult relationship. And when my mother passed away, I mean, without the Lord, I don't know what I've done. I, I was actually in Huntington and pastoring a church in Lexington. And I had to drive from Huntington to Lexington to get Ann and David. And I mean, I just, I don't know how I made it because I, tears all in my eyes all mm. the way down there and back. Mm. Yeah. And God helps you through those oh, times. Oh, yes, and he, he really, and we don't have a whole lot of time to get into the depth of that, but, right. but I will say that just by, I can say by experience, yeah. there have been times that I didn't know what to do. Oh, I agree. I felt like yeah. my back yeah. was up against the wall, whether, uh -huh. it, been, whether it was emotionally. Right. Now, it could be uh, emotionally, spiritually, uh -huh. emotionally, yes. physically, um, financially. Uh huh whatever that I felt like I was in trouble and I've right. been in trouble in all of those areas before. Right. And when I didn't know what to do, I didn't know who to call. I didn't know where I could get the, the comfort or the help that I needed. I could always count on that relationship with God. And it, and it wasn't like, you know, going to work and getting a paycheck right. on Friday. Right. And it wasn't like that, like, oh, well, I'll just show up and on Friday God will pay me what, whatever right. he's going to give me. It, well, it's not like that, but it's because it's not always that quick. Right. But I could all I can always count on him, and and I need that. I need someone that I can count on because I recognize as a human being my shortcomings, and I also recommend recognize my deficiencies. And I think sometimes the quicker that we can come to that understanding yeah. of where we are at, that we have deficiencies. Yeah. And we have needs, uh -huh. and know that we need to look to Him. That that's the, the, yes, the time that we're going to receive from Him. 2021 was the roughest year of my life. I had 44 radiation treatments. I was in the hospital. I don't know how many times with my heart racing. I was in the hospital with my uh, heart down to 31. Uh, I have an aneurysm. But through it all, Jesus was with me and helped mm -hmm. me, and I just thank him. I just thank him. I just appreciate him so much for keeping me alive. And, and yeah. without him, I would not have made it. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that when we, when we, have, when we can develop in uh -huh. ourselves into a relationship like that, yes, sir. you're able to look to him yes, at, sir. at times. For, and that's yeah. the thing is I think also... We, we think sometimes, and, and I'm going to speak, I'm going to say something that might be hard for some people to hear, yeah, but I'm right. going to go ahead and say it anyway. I think sometimes we, now we are blessed Amen. to live in the yeah. most wonderful place on the planet. Yes. I've been, yeah. I have had the privilege to be in several foreign countries. Yes, sir. And don't get me wrong, the people are absolutely wonderful in uh -huh. the countries that I've been to. I've been to the Philippine Islands. Uh -huh. I have been to Haiti on numerous occasions. Uh -huh. I have been in a variety of places all throughout the Caribbean, and other people I know could say, well, I've never been to Europe, but I could, I'm could. i sure other people have been, and they would say the same thing. Wonderful people, you know, excellent. No matter where yeah. you go in the world, you always find good people. Amen. But no matter where you're at, I think sometimes if, we're, if we live in America, we tend to think that we're just a... <laughs> you know, we, we are blessed to be in the most yeah. wonderful nation because yeah. we have, for even even though there's things we don't like. Amen. And, Come on. And, and certain people we don't particularly care for right. in offices, we still have the greatest nation in the world. Amen. That said, sometimes yeah. I think that translates to think that we are a cut above and we don't need what everybody else needs. Uh, and I, I yeah. just know this, Pastor yeah. Wells, I, we, we all... We yeah. all need Jesus. Amen. No matter yeah. where it is, no matter what's yeah. going on in our life, we all need that relationship. Everyone does. Let, let me read John three sixteen yeah. real quick. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason that we need to be saved and follow Jesus is because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. You know, and then it goes on to say, for God did not come to condemn the world, right. but he came to save the world. Right. And, and I have a son and I love my son with all of my heart. And I don't know if I could give him up mm -hmm. to save people the yeah. way that God gave his son up yeah. to save us. Yeah. No, I, I think it's very obvious yeah. for most people, maybe, maybe no, nobody, it's one thing to give somebody up that you love for somebody else that you love. Yes, amen. But to give up your son to a world that didn't really love you at oh, the time. That's right. And all you had was the hope that they would, that they would come around to loving yes. you. Amen. I don't think that anybody could do that other than God. Right. And, and when, we, when we see the character and the integrity and the nature of God, that is when we can recognize what a privilege and what an oh, honor it is amen. to serve God and have yes. him a part of oh, your life. Glory. And look, I'll tell you, I, yeah. there's just, again, we were, we were talking just a few minutes ago about, I, there's times that I need things, Pastor Wells. Amen. I, I just, and I don't want to have a relationship with God to where he's just like, you know, I only go to him when yeah. I need something. Amen. But that said, I can go to him right. when I need something. Yes, sir. But it's wonderful to be able to have a relationship with God when I don't need anything and I can wake up in the morning and I can look up and say, Jesus, thank you for another <laughs> breath. Thank you for another day. Yeah. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for helping my family. Yeah. Thank you for blessing my children, my grandchildren. Amen. Uh, everybody that's in my life. My, I told Debbie last night, I, we were getting ready for bed and I told her, I said, you know, I am so grateful I'm so grateful to the Lord. I love my family. Uh -huh. I love my children. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. And I love my church family. Amen. And I'm like, because I ask her just so every now and then we'll say things, just, you know, just yeah. little affectionate things. I'll say, are you happy, honey? <laughs> are you happy? And she goes, I'm extremely happy. She goes, you happy? And I said, I don't know that I could be happier <laughs> with life. Amen. I, yeah, I just don't because... Yeah. I, I have that relationship with him. We have a great church family. I mean, I've I've never seen one like that where everybody just loves one another. Yeah. I mean, usually in churches, they develop little cliques. Yeah. Part here, part here. But we don't have that, or I've never seen it. Yeah. Everybody's the same. When they come through the doors, yes. they'll get a handshake, a hug, a welcome. And it'll be gen a, genuine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's sincere. I, I even go outside and greet them. I, I mean, I, I, I just do. I love greeting people. I, I, I love people. I know you do, and and yeah. I love that about you. Yeah. And that's because yeah. the the Lord is yeah. shining through you, Amen. and because that's the way He feels. Yes. And you know, the Lord told me something a, a number of years ago when we literally when we first started the church to be 17 years this July, yeah. and uh, the Lord told me something spoke very clearly to me. He said, "You can never allow strife." To Amen. be in your church, but, yes, he said, because strife is a a a congregation killer. Yeah. Oh yeah, and 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 if you read, you could look. We won't turn there, but in but, James, he talks about that where strife uh, or where envy is, uh -huh. that there's every evil work. Or, yes, and so that means when strife is present, and uh -huh. I've had to actually, to be honest with you, I've had to have hard conversations with people uh -huh. through the years to say, listen. Right now, you're causing strife. I know you probably don't mean to. Right. You, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's your nature or, what you're, right. or your intent, uh -huh. but you're causing strife, and, and here's the hard thing to hear. But if you're causing strife, you are being used of the devil. Right. Do Indeed. you want to be used of the devil? Uh -huh. and, and obviously, the, the answer to that is, of course, no. Right. Well, I can, I can take it to, to the Scripture and say, yeah. when strife is present, right. there's every evil work. Right, and so we've had to, you know, it, it help people, correct people in love, yeah, to help them to see that strife. We can't have strife because it it kills relationships. Right, and that's one thing that I feel like the Lord always had for us as a mandate is we're a church that's going to be a relationship church. We're going to be a family. Yes, and uh, but that's because again, I don't want to just keep beating a dead horse, but um, that's because. We all need Jesus in our life. Glory. And when we have Jesus yes. in our life, he, this is the kind of relationship he wants for us. Right. One that isn't uh, with turmoil or, or anger at people for this or that. Yeah, people yeah. sometimes disappoint you. Right. But 
Pastor Wells, I've come to one conclusion. <laughs> people have disappointed me in the past, but I've also disappointed people. Oh, I agree. I have too, Pastor. And and yeah. and you just you go look. Everybody like just like everybody needs Jesus. Everybody also needs grace. Amen. We all do. I, I've told the doctors. I said if you, if you discover I've got a heart, I'm going to sue you because. Every, everyone thought I didn't have a heart <laughs> when I was pastor. <laughs> yes. Well, I've, I've heard that too before. That, that's too harsh or too cold. Yeah. And, but if when we, we extend grace to people, it just, it's, a, it, it's not only is it the right thing to do, but it is what Jesus did. Jesus uh, extended grace to people. I can tell you an incident in my life. Of course, I, the church I was in, we were us four no more and uh, I was coming across the tracks in it's third street east in Huntington I believe on Washington Avenue or it's fourth avenue actually up there I went across those tracks and there was a, a guy drunk coming out of the building and I'd been in that building many times myself and I said look at that old drunk and the Lord said except for my grace that would be you. Yeah. And you know, I believe that. Yeah. It was God's grace. Giving you the chance to, yeah. to, to hear yes. who he was, what he wanted yeah. for you, and yeah. to make a correction. Right. And I believe that God wants us to do that for everybody right. because it comes back to the thing that we've been yeah. saying. Right. I don't care what you're at in life, whether you have lots of money uh -huh. or you have a little bit of money, uh -huh. whether you are you're healthy or whether you have sickness in right. your body, yeah. whether you're an emotional wreck or whether you're a sound mind as you yeah. could be, it doesn't matter. Right. Every single person needs, needs Jesus, Jesus because without Jesus, Pastor Wells, you're, you're not going to heaven. No, it's just that no, simple. That's right. And I, and listen, I know there's different religions that say different right. things. Right. I'm, I'm, I don't want to bash anybody's religion. I don't want to just like, you know, to, to, to say, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and that's the way it is. Yeah. I know that I don't have everything figured yeah. out. I know yeah. that much. But one thing that I'm, I am secure and I am convinced on, uh -huh. there's only one way to the Father. That's what the Bible says. And if you're going to believe the Bible, that's what yes. you're going to have to either accept that or not. Amen. I mean, or move on. Well, that's right, but, Pastor. But the Bible says yes. there's only one way to the Father, uh -huh. and that's through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the righteous one. Amen. And... If you don't see that, you don't yeah. accept that, then there's not anything that no. I know to do for you. No, no. And the Holy Spirit calls us, calls us to Jesus. Yes. And, and you know, if, if people, you know, it took me a long time to get things uh, situated in my mind that I need to believe the Bible and not what was being preached. I, I told you about the instance mm -hmm. I had with the lady and, mm -hmm. that I didn't think was saved. And yeah. <laughs> That was my first experience with that as a Pentecostal Christian mm -hmm. that I'd ever seen that happen. And I found out she was a wonderful Christian. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> it, it, nobody, and I, we'll, we'll kind of do this and kind of as we get uh, ready to close here in just a few minutes, um, let, let's talk about that. Not everybody is going to look like me or you. That's right. And glad and they I'm, don't. <laughs> and I'm not talking about physically. Right. I'm, I mean, the way they yeah. respond right. to Jesus. Uh -huh. When Jesus, here, here's a thing that I think that people really need to see and, and, and remember. I think that people see sometimes, and they think sometimes, that if I got saved, I'll have to do it exactly like you and look like you. That's the way we taught it. That's the way it was that we Back presented in the day. it. Yeah, yes, that's sir. the way we presented it. Yes, sir. But here's the thing: uh -huh. people, every person has a different personality. Amen. And the way that we do things, you know, the Lord spoke to me some a number of years ago, and He told me this. He said, um, regarding to the the message of salvation, the message uh -huh. of the gospel, He said, um, the the method of delivery. Uh -huh. The method of delivering the message uh -huh. is constantly changing. Oh, yes. But the message never changes. Well, that's, good, that's a good word, Pastor. The, the message, the yes. way that we deliver the message. Well, I mean, mm. you know, a number of years ago, when we first started the church here, and you'll, you'll remember this, when we first started the church, we were preaching on, I was preaching on WEMM. Yes, sir. And I had a program for many, many years. Uh-huh. 
And uh, that was uh, one way that I felt like that I have a, had a chance to get the message out, not yes. only to the body. We didn't have Facebook. Right. But then the internet came along, uh -huh. and then social media came along, uh -huh. and then we had the opportunity to do it a different way. Right. So the method of getting that message uh -huh. out has changed. Yes, sir. You know, when they delivered mail uh -huh. years ago, they had the Pony Express. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we don't we don't have the Pony Express anymore. Right? Now we have jumbo jets carrying yeah. mail yeah. around. Yeah. So it's changed, but the message never changes. In social with social media, you can reach more people at one time than Jesus ever could at it's one time. Unbelievable, isn't it? it? It's it's unreal. Well, I was on TV for quite a while, and sometimes we get calls from Pikeville and get them from Charleston, even though we had the local station. Mm -hmm. And they'd want to be saved or they'd want healing. You know, mm -hmm. we'd pray for healing. And, yeah. and God always, you know, God always blesses and comes through when you're praying for people for healing. Mm -hmm. they, they might not get healed then, but they might get healed later. Mm -hmm. But they may never have uh, enough faith where they can believe, but God will still bless them. Yeah. And, and as you were reaching out on, t in that particular instance, yeah. television, people had the opportunity to hear something. Right. And, and that's the thing that we have to realize. The yeah. entire world is looking for people like me and you. Uh -huh. Some, and, and, and thank God for all the wonderful Christian television yeah. t uh, stations there right. are. I appreciate all of those. Um, but they, even that doesn't get to reach them all. Even no. that doesn't reach no. everybody. But... When, we, when we're doing our part, I'm doing my part, you're doing your part, I'm, I'm called to do a, you know, right. what I'm supposed to do, you're called to do what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. and every other person's called to, to do what they're supposed to do. When we all do that collectively, eventually, it's like a domino. Right. It begins yes. to have an effect yeah. around oh, yeah. us, and people begin to at least get to hear about Jesus. Right. And when they see that not only, Pastor Wells, is he the Savior. Amen. He's the healer. Uh huh. He he'll he'll help you during your emotional times oh, when you Lord. have emotional. Yes, you may be emotionally distraught. Uh -huh. Whether you're going through a financial problem, uh -huh. an issue, he wants to help you there because financial mm -hmm. problems can be. I mean, they can be heavy. Yeah. The burden uh, can be heavy. I think most divorces are over money. Yeah. Lack, lack of lack of y money. Yes. Yeah. They cause it isn't just yeah. a lack of money. Right. It, it creates a stress yes. in an environment. Uh -huh. And it's the same thing even for churches. Oh yeah. Churches get in financial duress to the place to where pastors don't they don't want to preach anymore because they feel that 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 right. uh that pressure. Yes, sir. And so the problem is, is sometimes we didn't necessarily look to Jesus in every area. We've right. always looked to him for salvation. Amen. Come but on. we need Jesus in every facet of our right. life, whether right. it's um, uh, is it the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, or the financial. Yeah. Amen. The whole yes. part of man is what we have to realize. That's what Jesus is interested in helping us. Oh, yes. Because if I'm deficient in one area, it causes me to be less effective in other areas. Oh, I agree. I agree, Pastor. So, thank God. Folks, I just <laughs> want to tell you, if you don't know Jesus, Amen. you need Jesus. You need we a Savior. all need Jesus. You, you need the Savior. Need a Savior. You yes. need the healer. Uh -huh. You need the emotion uh, uh -huh. uh, restorer. And you need the financial God that can help you in any problem to help you get on track to where you can have that pressure relieved, the stress relieved, so that you can be the person that God has called you to be and be able to, to go out and do exactly what he said. And Mark will end right here, yeah. Mark 16, 15. Yeah. He said to them, go into all the world and preach yes. the gospel to everyone. Amen. Every person. Yes. Every person on the planet needs <laughs> Jesus. And that includes you because you're a person on the planet. Amen. And if you're here in the world, I'm telling you folks, you need Jesus and Amen. you need all the wonderful benefits. There's so many benefits to serving God, just like what you said wonderfully, Amen. the way you, you said yeah. it, is even if there wasn't, if heaven wasn't at stake, right. if hell wasn't at stake, right. it's still the right way to live. Oh, peace. Yes. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. <laughs> Pastor Wells, as we get ready to close, uh, just share with everybody anything that you'd, you'd tell them uh, about uh, having a relationship with Jesus. A relationship with Jesus Christ is the best relationship you ever have. My wife knows that I love her, but Jesus is first in my life because he's the one that saved me. 
He's the one that brought me out of sin, put my feet on solid ground, and he's been with me all these 50-some years <laughs> that, he, that I've been saved. And I just, I just give him praise and honor and glory. And I thank him every day for life. Yeah. Not only life, but the abundant life that I have everything I have need of. Yeah, amen. amen. Folks, there it is summed up. Yeah. You want, uh, you want to be able to have peace and joy yeah. and, and tranquility in your life, come to know the Lord Jesus. And if you have questions about that and you'd like to know more, you can message us right amen. there on your screen. You could just send us a message or private messages. And, uh, and, and tell us that you want to know more. We'll respond to that, yeah. and we'll get back with you, and we'll help lead you to, to uh, finding out more about Jesus that will help you to have a relationship like what we're talking about. Amen. That's wonderful. Yes. Brings joy and peace, uh -huh. and something that uh, is honestly, it's more valuable than silver or gold. Amen. There's nothing that comes, compares to right. it. Right. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for, for being with us. I want to encourage you, if you've never been to Kingsway Church, then you should come out and visit us. We're at Providence Hill Drive, uh, just below the Providence Hill Apartments right here in Ashland, Kentucky. We would welcome to, to see you here, and we would just love to get to know you. You'd come in, and, and I, just as Pastor Well said, there are yeah. people that will greet you and love you and immediately make you feel right at home. We love our atmosphere that we have here at Kingsway Church, and uh, we just would be honored to get to see you. So we're hoping you'll come out and see us on uh, Sunday morning at 1030. But if you don't get to do that, then we're hoping to be able to see you the next time here on Facebook on uh, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock for a little bit of encouragement. So until I get to see you again, me and Pastor Wells are both mm -hmm. coming to you, and we're praying that God's very best will be yours. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.